Hello, grade five. Welcome to our next step in our project-based learning. Remember, the goal is to create a virtual Rube Goldberg machine, and we're going to create a program for that in Scratch. And this week, we are doing stage three. That is the next stage in our Rube Goldberg machine. So let's dive into Scratch and see what we can see. So here we are inside of Scratch. Remember, you have to sign in. If you don't sign into Scratch, it will not save your work. So we're gonna click sign in. I have my username and password there. If you don't remember your username, you can always send me an email and I will help you find it. Once I have signed in, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna to go to my stuff. So let's take a look for that. I have it zoomed so I can't see it. There we go. So I'm gonna click on my name Make sure your username's up here. Click on My Stuff, and you should be able to get to your last project as that's loading. So you can see here I have a Rube Goldberg Stage 1 and a Rube Goldberg Stage 2. I'm going to click on Seeing Inside Rube Goldberg Stage 2 because we're going to build Stage 3 off of that. And just like we did before, just review our stages so far. We're going to go to File and Save as a Copy. It's going to add the word copy to the end of our title here. We know it's saved because it says Project Saved. And now at the end, oops, let me do that again. It didn't make a copy. Make a copy copying project. Great. It should now tell me the project was saved as a copy and it should have at the end the word copy to. So I'm going to change this to stage three. So remember when we did stage two, we had to hide a whole bunch of things. So when we do stage three, we're going to have to do the same kind of thing. So we're going to have to hide this sprite. So when it's all done, we're going to have to make sure we make the sprite disappear. So we're going to have to broadcast another message, right? Um, so let's go to events and broadcast new message stage three. And we're going to hide the loop de loop. So let's see how that looks. Something didn't go right. Let me go back to stage one. I think it happened too fast. I'm gonna put the hide instead on the sprite. Let me do that again. Whoops, that was my fault. I put it on the wrong sprite. I wanted the code to go on the ball, not on the loop. So the last thing the ball has done, it is flying off the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to now broadcast stage three. New message, stage three. There we go, that's where I want to end. When sprite three receives stage three, we want it to hide again. So we're gonna to go to looks and we're gonna to go to hide. So it hides when we hit green, it shows when it receives stage two, and it hides again when we receive stage three. So let's take a look at that. And there we go. So now we know the ball is kind of shooting up in the corner here. We have to decide how we want it to come back on the screen. I'm thinking the most amount of sense means it should come down here on the bottom. So after we broadcast stage three, I'm gonna go back to my sprite and I'm gonna move the ball again back down to here. And I want it to happen instantaneously so I can hide it and show it again like I did before. So I'm going to hide it. And then I'm gonna move it. I wanna move it way down here. Let 
like that. And then I can see that the computer's automatically put the numbers in for me. And then I'm going to go to my looks and I'm going to go to show. And the ball should come back. Whoops, I put it in the wrong spot. Let me move that again. Put the number in negative two, 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 and y position negative 160. Let's do that again, make sure it works. There we go. Now it's at the bottom of the screen. So now we're ready to build the next stage. And at this point, you guys can make a choice as to whether or not you want to just continue and, and do something very similar, do another ramp, or do something more complicated with a pulley and a more complicated animation and more things. Um, but what I'd like to do is do something a little bit different and do a clone just to kind of see what happens. Maybe something happens with multiple balls on the screen. So let's give that a try. So what I'm going to do is go down to create a clone of myself. And then I'm going to have when I start as a clone. Hmm. So now we're going to have the ball do something different as a clone. But we want to be able to clone this more than once. So the first thing I'm going to do is have it clone itself again. So when I start as a clone again, I'm going to clone myself immediately right and then i'm going to have the ball move to a random position on the screen and then after i have the ball move to the random position on the screen after about let's say i take two seconds to do that i'm going to have it delete itself from being a clone. So let's just see what that does for now. Wow, we get all these balls that are kind of appear on the screen. And if after a while, after about two seconds, they all end up disappearing. So if I wanna change the time and make them stay on the screen a little bit longer, I could put in more time here, or I could put a delay and make it delay and stay on the screen for a little bit. So I might want to do that instead, maybe wait another second or so and have a delay. Wow. And then what happens in that point? You know, how what's the next stage of the Rube Goldberg machine? So I just thought that would be kind of interesting. You might be able to play with that idea. Um, let me see what I can do. So the first thing I did is I created this new sprite and on this new sprite, I'm going to draw in a horizontal line. So I click on paint and you can see, I'm gonna to go to my lines and I'm just gonna draw in a line. We'll make it nice and thick so we can see it. There we go. Maybe a little bit shorter. Use my eraser tool. There we go. And then I'll position it way up here at the top. Great. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the ball, as soon as it starts creating those clones, go up to the top here. And it's going to be like the other balls are going to push the lever up and this ball is just going to roll off. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to create a clone as myself. I'm going to immediately after I create a clone of myself, I'm going to hide it so we can't see it anymore. I'm going to move it way up to here and I can see the numbers change. Hope it didn't take it. Hang on, I do that again. There we go. Now I got the numbers. And then I'm going to show it. like that okay then all these balls are gonna push but now what I have to do is when this gets into contact with a clone or with one of the balls I have to have the lever three 
change. I have to have the lever move. So I'm gonna do that on the sprite. Now also notice on this sprite, we have the same code, if I can find it, that we had before. Oh, maybe I just deleted it. I'll put it back on. Oh, here it is. When I receive stage four, when green flag is clicked hide, and then when I receive stage three. So it's very similar to what I did here, only it's just the next two stages. Okay. So what I've done is I've created a little loop here that is gonna keep running until the ball sprite, which is sprite one, is touching the line sprite. When it touches the line sprite, the line is gonna turn 15 degrees. Let me go back to the ball sprite. I added in that I'm just gonna have the ball wait two seconds and then have it glide off of the platform and then broadcast stage four and hide the ball for ready to be beginning the next stage, okay? So here's what that looks like. And you can see all the balls look like they appear, the ball falls off the ramp, and we are ready now to move the next stage. So I think you guys can do this. I look forward to see what you got and catch you next time.